Hello there and welcome back to my channel and another fountain pen review. My name is Doug and I have a new in the box Cross Bailey fountain pen for you today. Even though I've been a Cross owner and user for over 30 years, this is the first time I've ever reviewed a Cross pen. And let's open up this box and take a good look at this beautiful pen right now. So here we are with this brand new Cross Bailey fountain pen. Before I unbox this pen, I have a story. Isn't there always a story behind a pen? Of course, if you were just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts, ma'am. Says who, flathead? Kind of person, you can use the timestamps as always. I've put in the description below to skip ahead to the pen details. This story has to do with my almost lifelong love and hate relationship with cross pens. That's too shiny. Not too shiny for you. Let's put cross there. When I was a young man and in university and in the first years of my professional life as a college professor, I loved and used cross pens. Now I had gone through a phase through high school where everything was done with a fountain pen, those lovely Schaefer student models you could get for a buck and a quarter and are now more than 25 bucks on eBay if you can get one. But through college and university and into my teaching career, the cachet was a cross pen. Here's the cross I spent a lot of money on for a struggling student back in 1977. It is a 14 karat gold filled, slender ballpoint pen with a twist mechanism. These are pretty familiar to most people. You still think you're gonna walk on some beach and see the birdies? <laughs> I don't think so. Later on, while I was teaching theater technology, I was always in pretty rough areas, working backstage in the theater, hanging lights. Here on the Happy Wonders. Oh, <laughs> building scenery, etc. So I decided to save my beloved 14 karat gold cross and bought a relatively less expensive, a little bit less expensive, 10 karat gold cross pen. It has seen some wear and the clip is kind of mangled, but I used this pen for about 15 years. Then, while signing some financial documents with my financial advisor and friend, he gave me his pen to sign and I was immediately in love with it. I asked about it and he told me it was a Cross Townsend medalist in chrome and gold. And it was a rollerball. I loved it immediately and went out and got one. I think it was about 40 bucks at the time. I used this rollerball for the rest of my professional teaching career until I retired in 2014. Now in the interim, I had used a lot of fountain pens, technical pens, mechanical pencils, and other writing instruments because teaching architectural drafting gets you involved with many forms of writing and drawing tools. I also bought a few of these chrome ballpoint pens, like this one. It's the same model, but it's chrome, and they're fairly inexpensive. I think when I got this one, it was about 20 bucks, something like that. But I got a number of these uh, for my team, uh, my negotiating team, when I negotiated a new contract for my faculty association in 2006. I don't know whether you can read that or not, but it is engraved with Collective Agreement 2006. So they're, they're really nice gift pens to give away on special occasions, and they're really, really useful. Then I was gifted a cross fountain pen, the Aventura. And my love of cross and my fondness for the nostalgia of fountain pens was lost. Not forever, but it was lost. This pen was awful and is still awful. I worked hard on it recently and it is still hopeless there's a number i won't go into that right now with this pen but there's a number of things about the aventura that i dislike not intensely but just really dislike one of the things is that that nib and you'll see this nib in a moment again uh just will not behave won't write well skips all kinds i've tried everything on it but the cross Townsend Medalist Rollerball was the greatest pen I owned. 
After seeing a review of the Cross Townsend Star Wars edition by David Parker, I thought, that looks like my rollerball. I had no idea my rollerball was even called a Townsend. So I did some research. The Townsend seems to be quite the famous model of pen, even being a favorite of President Obama. So I looked for a Townsend medalist fountain pen at Staples and on Amazon. Holy schmeck, Batman. Holy understatements, Batman. Just the rollerball alone is 160 bucks. this one. And the fountain pen is about $200 Canadian. Holy shit! The model I'm looking at today is much more reasonable in price, and I got this at Staples for slightly less than $50 on sale. Right now they're going for about $78 Canadian. Let's get it out of the box. For a $50 fountain pen, I think this packaging leaves a lot to be desired. Um, I have to admit that I've already opened this package up and because this pen doesn't belong to me, I just would have cut through it with scissors because it was so frustrating to get into it. But putting it back together again was like putting toothpaste back in the tube. So the tray slides out and inside is some cross warranty information that gives you um, information on their lifetime warranty for mechanical reasons, which is actually a good thing, a lifetime warranty on a, on a fountain pen. And there is a single proprietary cross cartridge. So let's look at this pen. But before we do, let's just bring the box back for a second and look at the back of it. Because it says, made in China. My original 1977 14K gold ballpoint was made in the USA. But all of these others, all of these others were made in China. That's not to knock the cross company or the Chinese manufacturers, but to point out to some purists that many of these brand name companies, their products are made in China. The AT Cross Company actually owns Schaefer. So let's get it out of the package here. There's the cap. There's the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of this pen, give some measurements and do some size comparisons, and then I'll do a writing sample. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the writing sample where I'll share my likes and dislikes about this pen. The pen is finished in chrome and 23 karat gold appointments. Starting at the top, there we go. We see a gold dome and chrome, chrome and dome, dome and chrome uh, finial, and then a gold band that attaches the very sturdy and very usable cross clip. And I think it's very elegant, elegantly designed as well, that clip. Very useful. The cap tapers up until it meets the cap band. And the cap band is rather attractive. It has a, I don't know if you can see that or not, if I can focus. It has a cross-hatched, pardon the pun, uh, texture on the two gold bands and then gently comes down to meet the body. The body goes straight until about here when it tapers down to a flat but rolled edge uh, blind cap. And the blind cap, the faux blind cap, is separated from the rest of the barrel uh, in gold plate with a couple of nice rings. The snap cap pops off with a little bit of effort to reveal a black plastic section with two gold rings, one here at the separation of the section in the body and one here towards the nib. And we see a number five cross nib with that deco pattern on it. Very nice art deco pattern. And it says cross. And we see that this is a medium nib because there's an M there on the shoulder of the nib. And that very typical downturn nib of the cross. It makes it look like it's bent, but that's the way they're designed. 
Let's look at the section for a moment. It's fairly long and barrel shaped. It tapers down to a raised gold ring. This might be a bit slick for some, but it's, it's much better than being metal. I just want to bring out the Townsend here for a second. Not the Townsend. <laughs> Pardon me. This is the Aventura. The section on this pen is truly awful. It is tapered, it bulges, and it has a little ring on the bottom, but it is so very slippery because it's chrome. It slips all over the place. One of the most uncomfortable sections on a fountain pen I've ever felt. This is quite different. It's almost the same shape. It has that barrel shape that tapers. It's very long. There's no feeling to that ring at all. So you can basically write with this pen anywhere. And that plastic, even though this part might be slippery, that plastic is not slippery at all. and actually feels a bit grippy. The cap posts and posts deeply and it makes the pen, it does back weight it a bit, just a bit, changes the balance a bit, but it's very comfortable to write with at this length. In fact, I don't generally post my pens but this pen feels better posted than it does unposted. It's still very comfortable to write unposted, but this is very satisfying. Very satisfying, nicely balanced, beautiful fountain pen. So you can write with this pen either posted or unposted. Now I'll give you some measurements, some size comparisons, and I'll be right back with a writing sample after I've written with it for a little while. See you in a bit. Okay, we're back for the writing sample portion of the review. We have here the Cross Bailey Medalist fountain pen, and it has a medium nib. In medium. The ink is cross black. Let's check the wetness. This is a very wet pen. And it gives a, a pretty typical medium line. Let's check some line variation here. This is no pressure at all. This is pushing it a bit. So there is some line variation to be had here. Let's listen to it. It's actually very, very smooth, but it has some feedback. And that feedback, when I really listen to it, it uh, has a little bit of a squeak to it, which I find is interesting. This is Clairefontaine 90 gram paper, by the way. And considering that this nib is the same one as that what's on my Aventura, I was uh, very surprised at how smooth and wet this was. I wasn't expecting it to write like this, so this is a nice surprise. Let's try out some reverse writing here. So it does write in reverse, but not very well. And I've noticed that I have to keep 
replacing the cap on here because as I write with it, this body is so slick that it uh, keeps unposting itself. And some quick writing. It's uh, showing no problems in keeping up. So, what do I like and what do I not like about the Cross Bailey? Well, first off, this particular style of pen may be passe, but it's an old fart. I like it. Like I said, looks ain't deceiving, you old fart. Better let me handle this. The polished chrome and the gold are really classy in my view. Yes, it can be a bit cold to the touch, but it warms up considerably as you write. I like the deep posting of this pen and the balance of the pen when it's posted. This is a pen that looks very professional and classy at any business meeting or board table. It is also at a price point that allows you to knock it about because it's pretty sturdy and very well made. I mean, look at my Townsend Rollerball. It's 20 years old. It's been knocked about for two decades, and it is uh, still looking pretty good. It's got a couple of scuffs here and there, but it is still a beautiful-looking, solid pen. So I think the Bailey has that same kind of feel to it, that it is solid and well-made and won't be a, a problem in terms of being a workhorse. So what are the things that I'm not fond of? for this pen. Well, first, as you can probably see, it's a fingerprint magnet. If that bothers you, then give this model a pass. Um, I've also figured out why this one particularly is such a fingerprint magnet, and that's because this is just pure chrome, like a mirror, whereas the Townsend has these chasing lines on it. And that sort of breaks up the mirror-like surface so that the the fingerprints, although I still see them, they don't bother me as much. The second thing I'm not fond of is that the, the section is plenty long enough, certainly, and I can write with it anywhere, but it is fairly narrow for my hand, um, fairly thin, and I find that it is uncomfortable for long writing sessions. My hand tends to cramp up. I like a, a slightly girthier section on that. But for quick notes and marking up documents, etc., it's very attractive. A real workhorse pen with a lot of class. So, that's the Cross Bailey Medalist Fountain Pen. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to get automatic updates whenever I post a new video. So that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote.